I feel very lucky that we have such an amazing public museum that's in the same building as some of our research museums. If you look around, these are all contributions that have been made by professors, researchers, over the course of almost 100 years. And if you've ever been in this space when those buses unload and the kids pour in, I mean, you can really see it in action. Where they're having their horizons broaden, they're having their knowledge base expanded. This move from our current location, Alexander Ruthven Museum's building, to the new Biological Sciences building, it is bittersweet. So many memories have been carved into this place. When the photo was taken, I was probably about six years old. Walking into the same space I experienced as a child brings to surface emotions beyond just an appreciation for science as an adult. It's nostalgic. For me, it connects me to family. When I came back to take the second photo, we reached a situation where my grandfather's health was really declining. I'm happy to say that it really was um, something that he really enjoyed um, as one of our last experiences together. We've been measuring Moira's growth uh, against the leg of the sauropod uh, since she was uh, two or three years old. And it just was one of those things where we weren't sure we were allowed to climb on the platform, but she just kind of hopped up there one day and I took a picture. Um, it just became a thing that every time we came here, we tried to get a picture. She was more into dinosaurs at an earlier age than I ever was. And we just wanted to feed that curiosity and help her discover new things. We're just glad to have this place uh, in our community. There was nothing like this where I grew up, and so to have it was just a treat. We have a great opportunity in the Biological Science Building to collaborate more closely with scientists, to involve students more in the work that we do, and to really connect the public with the research that's going on at the University of Michigan. People who enjoy the museum in its current state, I think, will be blown away when they see what the re-envisioned museum looks like in the new building. I'm really looking forward to when I walk into the East Atrium of the new facility, seeing the familiar mastodons there in a unfamiliar space. So even though my grandfather is gone, all of these experiences that represent our time together are going to live on. Another really stunning experience at the new museum will be to see how we display our ancient whale skeletons. They'll be hanging in the large atrium space as people enter the museum. It'll be really a dramatic scene as the Basilosaurus is chasing down the Dorodon in front of it. So one reason I'm excited about the new cafe is that I think when you go and visit a public museum, most of them have a place to get some food, especially if you're bringing a group of school children to come visit, there has to be a place for them to eat. And also for the researchers to come and interact with the public in the same place. We will also be getting food, and so it'll be a great place for spontaneous conversations to occur. And in that space, we're going to put a display, and it'll include several different animals who are all hunting for their lunch. So with the new state-of-the-art planetarium and dome theater, people can expect state-of-the-art technology. We're going to be moving and upgrading to Digistar 6. And we also have extremely comfortable seating, and they're all at a tilt as well. And we're going to have almost twice the amount of seats that we had before. As a researcher, one thing that we try to emphasize is how we interact with the public about the kinds of research that we do. People can look through windows, they can peer into labs, they can see how science happens. And to be able to look over the shoulder of a scientist while they're doing their work, I think is really going to be extraordinary. We're very happy that we're going to be acquiring a new dinosaur for the new museum. It's called Majungasaurus, and it was from Madagascar. The Majungasaurus has a really interesting skull that probably had a horn on it. I'm really excited about the new home of the Museum of Natural History. We'll say goodbye to this space and look to the future, which I think is going to be really exciting, really bright, really transformative. I was so glad, so glad when I heard they were getting the new space and that the university was committing to this public outreach and that we're going to have a new museum. <laughs> <laughs>